Hello my lovely butterfly, it's France. Welcome back for a new guided journaling. Today it's all about connection and this is our starting point. Let's get kicking in our journal. Of course I will be using much more than just those paints, but I will be giving you as much alternatives as I can. And first things first, let's make sure that we're working on one spread. I am in between two signatures in my Channel on Monday art channel. And with Coptic binding, well, you do get a little separation between the signatures. As this is all about connection today, the first thing that I'm going to do is to actually connect the two parts of my spread. I'm doing so using some tissue tape, just putting it in place and then securing it with some soft gel. For our first layer, we're going to do a two-in-one by applying the paint directly with a brayer that will give us color and texture all in one. And we're going to do so in a rainbow shape on the spread, so not in lines. And we're going to create a gradient all in one. Now, keep breathing. I know this sounds a lot. It's just brayering on some paint. We're starting with the lightest color at the top working, as I said, in a rainbow shape. And we're going to work our way down, going darker and darker each time we come to the next part of our rainbow. Don't try to cover everything up, keep it light. And if you don't have a brayer, don't freak out. Just do this with a paintbrush, with a baby wipe, with your finger. Just do, as long as you do. In the end, the main point is just to get that color on the paper. If you don't have these kind of colors that really match together to create this kind of gradient, just start with one base color and add white to lighten it up and black to darken it. And that way you will end up with the same variety of colors as I do and you will be able to create a rainbow in a gradient just as well as I am. I decided to talk about connection today because I have been receiving a lot of messages from butterflies saying how alone they're feeling, how lonely they are. And I know that going to my art channel for me is my best source of auto therapy for as much as you can call this a therapy. And it allows me to connect with a whole bunch of things. And the first thing it allows me to connect with is myself, because in order to get stuff on the paper, I need to connect with myself. I need to listen to myself. I need to hear what it is I want to do. And I need to hear what makes me happy so that I can focus on that while I am journaling. And my invitation for you today is to do just that, to journal in a way that makes you happy. I think that that is the best way to start our connection with ourselves. Now that we've done our darkest color, we're going to go back in with the lightest color. To do so, of course, we need to clean our brayer. And we're going to go back in with the color that we started with, working from the top to the bottom in a very, very light-handed way. The point is not to cover everything up, but just to blend it a little bit more and add a tiny bit more of lightness to it all. As this is all about connection, we're going to cover up some of that tissue tape that we have in the middle so that our spread really forms one unity and that there's not this big, bold line in the middle.
we're going to go in with a mask. Of course, I decided to use one of my circles again because I just love circles and this is my journal, so I'm doing what makes me happy. And for the second stencil, I chose my honeycomb stencil. We're going in with something that will create a resist and that can be any kind of glue that you have. I decided to use the 3D gloss gel from Finovar, but if you just have a heavy gesso or a heavy glue that will stay in place, you can use just that. And then we're just scraping it on over the stencil. we are trying to connect with ourselves the best way to do so is when you start journaling to have some idea of what it is you want to journal about just when you start writing in a diary you know what it is you want to write about it is the same thing with journaling with art journaling just know what it is you want to art journal about and listen to yourself that is again a very good way to connect with yourself As we have that fun texture from wearing the paint on, we might as well play with it. So we're going to do that with some powder. First, we spray on some water and then we sprinkle on the powder and then we can push it in all that yummy texture just by rubbing it in with our hand. The point is not to give all the white color, but just to accentuate a texture that we have going on. Now, when I say that a good starting point is to know what it is you want to journal about, the point is not to actually depict that in our journal. The point is to just have the feel of what it is we want to journal about. And then to accentuate the resist that we have applied, we can go in with a darker color. Now this can be a spray ink. This is a new spray ink, so it did require some patience to start spraying. But you can do this again with some powder or some diluted paint, whatever it is you have at hand. And then blending it all in again with water. can move on to the next step we need to make sure that this is dry so that the water doesn't interfere with what we might do next and the next part is to add some dimension to the color that we have so far because it might look a little bit flat to do that you can just sprinkle on some color and you can try it just like that if you want to have something that is really present you can dry just like that or you can slightly blend it with water and then continue to dry and if you want to have it even softer you can just pick it back up with a piece of kitchen roll so that it just leaves a hint of color. connect the right and the left side of our spread we're going to do a repeat but with a different shape on the other side so I'm going back in with that same stencil with the same color that we started with this time applying it with a sponge over the stencil 
When you're doing this, first of all, make sure that you have your stencil in the right direction. If you don't know how to do that, check out the link in the description of this video to my how to use a stencil properly tutorial. And second, don't overload your sponge with paint. It will just push the paint everywhere underneath your stencil instead of having a nice print going on. If doing this step is something that makes you happy, just know that this is something that you can repeat several times with different colors that we've been using for the previous layers. I decided to go for something a little bit more bold, so I did the same thing with the darkest purple and some black as well. Again, keeping my sponge very, very lightly loaded so that I wouldn't have too much color going on, yet I did want it to Another thing that I like to do to connect with myself is to remind myself that there is a big difference between being alone and being lonely. With the lockdowns that we have going on when the kids are at their dad's place and I am by myself here in the house, well, at times loneliness can be present, like really there. And then I have to remind myself of that difference. And one of the ways that I like to do that is to go over my love list. You might know the kill list from Arya in Game of Thrones. Well, I have the same kind of list, except that it's a love list. And on my love list are all the people with whom I have exchanged uh, some words in the past couple of days or even couple of hours. And usually I discover while I do this that those exchanges really were more in-depth than at first they can let to think. Um, one of the main names that are on my list are some of my patrons with whom I spend a lot of time during my hangouts. And of course we talk about a lot of things, sometimes very light things, sometimes not so light things. We laugh a lot together, sometimes we cry, we cry together, uh, but the exchanges are always so meaningful that yeah, those people do appear on my love list. And then of course there's all my family members, my close tribe, of course they're on my list as well. Let's give that darker side of the spread some more attention. And we're going in with some black. I chose my uh, black water soluble charcoal pencil so that I can go in with water and then blend it around and really push it in again into that texture. If you don't have a black water soluble charcoal pencil, you can do this with a regular pencil. You can do this with a new color, a new color too, whatever it is you have at hand. I really love how doing this makes all that resist pop from the spread. It's a little bit like thinking of all this, these exchanges that I've had with all those people and how at first they might not seem like much, but when you start to think about it, they're actually way more meaningful than um, I thought. Well, they were for me and I choose to believe that they were for those people too. <laughs> For the circle, I'm going to show you two ways to make it stand out. For the first one, we're going to keep it very, very simple. And the first thing that we're going to do is just to add some of that black as well at the bottom of the circle.
so this is still part of the easiest way of how to make the circle stand out so we're going back in with the lightest color that we've used so far and we're going to apply that at the top of the circle and to make the circle connect with the rest of the spread we're applying our shade in the same way as the color is evolving on the spread so it's going from the top left corner to the bottom right corner from light to dark and we're doing the same with the circle so it's not really top and bottom it's a little bit more to the left and then a little bit more to the right so a little bit more to the left for the lightest color and a little bit more to the right for the darkest color And the first surprising element is that green that we are incorporating. So if you're working with other colors, which I hope you are, because I hope that you're working with colors that make you happy, pick a contrasting color that you would not expect in this color scheme. And we're applying that color over the lightest part of our circle in a very, very light way. We just want it to be slightly present. Now, of course, we need to show off that color on the spread. So we add a little bit of water to it and then add some splatters here and there to make it stand out. So this is the easy way to work with that circle. But there is a harder way. If you're feeling adventurous, follow me along and we're going to do a full gradient in that circle with these same colors. To do that gradient, first we're going to apply our colors on our work surface next to our spread. And I like to do that in the order that I need to apply them on my spread for the gradient. And again, if you don't have these many colors to work with, just mix them up with white and black so that you create your own little gradient next to your spread. And then again, we're going in with our finger and we're applying it in the same way as we did with the light and dark, except that this time we're building up the colors from the bottom to the top, going from one color to the next. Make sure that you pull the colors down far enough so that you actually have space to blend them together, to work on them before going over to the next one. And if like me you already applied the black there is no point in going over it so i'm just using that and just pulling the darkest color close to it but not over it if you haven't done the black yet well you just add it to the colors that you have to apply now in your gradient
going to do that same thing with that contrasting color, just keeping it very, very lightly and just at the top of the circle. And of course that circle needs some green splatters as well because well that green it needs to shine it needs to be there If doing the blending in the circle has stressed you out, now is a good time to relax because we're just adding a little bit of darkness to the edge by applying some Distress Ink with a blending tool just on the edge of the spread. And meanwhile, our splatters can dry by themselves. Just make sure that you don't put your finger in there. Do you feel the experience here? <laughs> Next up, pick a couple of background stamps that would make you happy to add to the spread. That can be one, that can be five. It's all up to you. Now, I, of course, had to go with numbers because that is what makes me happy. But you do you and you pick stamps that would make you happy to add to your spread. And as we've already put a lot of work in creating what it is we have going on, we can just stamp on the edges so that the rest of the spread can just shine for itself. For my wording, I decided to go with stamps as well as for my focal point. So you need to pick what would work for your spread and again, what would make you happy. I decided to go with my B stamps, which is my FP005 and some smoothie card from Paper Artsy to stamp it on. Depending on what it is you picked to colorize your focal point with, you need to pick your stamping ink accordingly. I decided to go with my Copic markers, so I need an ink that will resist those markers and Memento ink does just that. But you can colorize this image with Distress ink, with pencils, with whatever markers it is you have, even just with paints or infusions or, I mean, anything whatever you have at hand. To colorize my little bee, I decided to stick with the green, which we already have on the spread, and to incorporate orange, because why not? And yes, there is a way to connect all of these colors on the spread later on. But first, let's colorize.
at this point the little bee still looks a little bit flat that's because there's nothing going on in those wings and i did that on purpose when i designed this stamp so that you can add little lines yourself in the wings so that every time it would look slightly different not only because of the colors but also because of the lines that you can add in those wings When you're fussy cutting this little bee or any of these kind of stems that I have, there's no point in trying to save the little legs and things because we're going to make sure that those appear on the spread later on. And some black on the edge of the paper will make sure that it nicely connects to the spread. So this is a good way to not have to fussy cut those little legs. There's also a little bee stem that is completely full so that you can just stamp it directly on the spread or you can just stamp the original image directly on the spread so that you again have a complete image without all those little details that you didn't cut out or that you did cut away. stamp my wording directly on the spread in this case on that little circle that we made if you don't feel safe doing this don't beat yourself up just stamp it on a piece of paper and then add it to your spread or you can just try to stamp it and if it doesn't work out well then you just glue a stamped word on a separate piece of paper over the failed image no one will know but you I chose two words for my spread. I chose serotonin and P.S. there's hope. And as this is about connection, I do want these words to be connected on the spread. So I'm going to stamp them connected to one another. In order to connect all of these colors on the spread, we're going to reincorporate them in several ways. You can add them in splatters or, well, stay tuned, I'll show you a different way in a minute or two. Another fun way to connect the colors on the paper is with mark making and I decided to go with little lines but you can do this in a bolder way if you want the color to be more present. You could add some touches of light finger painting or you can go in with a larger object to scrape the paint on on the paper. To make the text stand out, it doesn't take much, just some white accents here and there on the letters and that will already do the trick. A 
Another thing that you can do to make your word stand out even more from the spread is to give it some accents with glossy accents. Now you need to do this with a very, very fine paintbrush. And this is something that I like to do because it feels like meditating. And as I do like meditating, it really, really helps me through my art channeling again to connect with myself. If, like me, you chose a flying kind of focal point, you can give it some movement in the wings before sticking it down. And then just adding a little bit of glue, it can go down on the spread. And this is where everything starts to come together. We've already connected with the green, we've already connected with the lightest color that we used. We also need to connect that orange to the rest of the spread. And I decided to do that with some more splatters, but you do you. And again, you add those accents in a way that would make you happy to do that. And just like we made the wording stand out, we can make our focal point stand out with glossy accents just by adding a light layer over it. And it will just make it pop from the spread. If you like your art channel to be some form of diary, don't forget to add your date stamp somewhere on your... And once our focal point is completely dry, we can, if we feel like it, add some more detail to that circle just to make it stand out a little bit more. I just traced it like once or twice with a Unipin uh, black marker and that's it. Et voilà, our spread is done. If you made one, I would love to see it. So feel free to share it on social media and tag me. All my social media links are in the description of this video. If you would like to spend more time with me in these form of guided journaling, you can join my Patreon page. Again, the link is in the description of this video. If you already are one of my patrons, you know how much you mean to me, like the world. <laughs> And some. Thank you so much for joining me again today. Don't forget to put down a layer a day. I'll see you back here next time. Butterfly kisses. <laughs>